Well, the Shadow Home Secretary, Diane Abbott, joins me now. Very good evening to you. Well, there's no doubt the reduction in police numbers occurred on Theresa May's watch. Can you clear up for us what the official Labour Party position is? Your leader seemed to suggest he wanted her to resign today and then row back a bit. What is it? No, our position is that in two days' time, on Thursday, the British people will have the opportunity to force her resignation by voting Labour in the general election. That is our position. But three terror attacks as well in the last two months, is that not grounds for calling for her resignation? We think this can be resolved at the general election, but it is a fact that we've had three terror attacks in three months, and now people are finally focusing on the cuts in police officers, which all occurred on her watch. She has a way in the past 24 hours of talking about the problems as if she hasn't been Home Secretary for six years. This comes back to her. But are you sure that the reduction in numbers then leads to... The, more, the greater likelihood of a terror attack. No, I'm not saying it leads to the greater likelihood of a terror attack, but in terms of the investigations and finding out what's going to happen, the reduction in numbers has meant there are less community police, police officers, and it is community policing which gives you the links to the community so you can actually find out what is really going on. OK, so you've got 10,000 more police officers coming on stream. How many of them will be involved specifically in community policing aimed at Muslim communities? Well, I don't know about being aimed at Muslim communities, but they definitely will all be community police officers. The 10,000 community police officers, then? 10,000 community officers up and down the country. In so no more West. detective inspectors, no increase at any other level, just with community police? We're starting with community policing because we think the... Well, sorry, is that all the 10,000 or some of them? We're starting with 10,000 community police officers because we think that helps make people safe and will help to fight terrorism and other forms of crime. But that is not to say... And, and can I just be here, they're sworn officers, are they? They're not community police support officers. No, 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 these are sworn officers. 10,000 sworn officers in every ward in the country. And we think that's the beginning of making the British people feel safe. Oh, and we think what, Theresa what, May should be embarrassed that well, numbers drop well, what role on her will they watch. Have? What role will they have in the communities they go into looking for terrorists? Chatting to them or will they act then as the eyes and ears of the security services and the other forces, the anti-terror police, who have to come in and arrest them? Their initial role will be to make those important links with the community. It's concerning, both in Manchester and in London Bridge, that members of the community said they tried to warn the police about their concerns about some of these individuals. Well, they rang some... an anti-terror hotline. And somehow nothing happened. Well, that wouldn't have been community police, though. I mean, the community police are going around having a, a, a cup think, of tea in the mosque or something, I aren't think they? that everybody... All the stakeholders in community policing know they play a very important role in building links between the community and the police. Let me, I mean, because that linking in the community, Jeremy Corbyn was quoted as having said something very interesting in 2014, that uh, he had uh, been speaking to people who were attracted to what ISIS is doing. I mean, it's a way of understanding the ideology. Have you done that? No. Um, no, because... Well, don't Every you want to understand what motivates these young men and women? Everyone that I speak to is completely horrified and disgusted by, by these terror attacks. But there's no doubt there's an ideology there, isn't there? Isn't it worth talking to them, as Jeremy Corbyn says he's done, and uh, trying to find out what motivates them? I, you know, I have a, a Muslim community in Hackney, but they are all horrified by these attacks. Let me ask you about these attacks, because um, I revisited, as I'm sure you have uh, recently, the, um, the Lord Harris uh, inquiry, the recommendations that he made to Sadiq Khan about uh, preparedness in London for a terror attack. Do, do you think some of the things he said in there were prescient and should be acted on? They haven't been acted on yet. I think we need, do need to revisit that report, because... And we do Wh need which to... part of it? Well, I just think it's about preparedness and resilience. Mm, we, we but need, he we, made some very specific recommendations that yeah. haven't been acted on. Do you know what they are? Well, I know... I mean, he was talking about preparedness and mm. resilience, and I do think that we need to act, not necessarily yes, on every but, specific recommendation. But, but, but you re remember, the report came out only in October 2016. The, the mayor, the newly elected mayor, commissioned it. It came out in October 2016, and Lord Toby Harris had some bullet points. You know, yeah. this, that's what I've read through. I mean, what did you make of those, the specifics? 
I thought, because I, I know Toby Harris, he's a very long standing very, very, very thorough blown inquiry, I must yeah. say, in review. I thought it was an important review, mm. and I think we should act on it, but obviously working mm. with stakeholders... But, but what should we act on? I mean, you know, what, what, what do you think of the recommendations about the various police forces in London? You mean the idea that they should work more closely together? Well, he suggested they should amalgamate. Well, I think that's an interesting idea, but I think you'd find resistance in some parts of London to the amalgamation Have of police Have you actually read force. the report? I have. OK, what about um, the, when you talk about, what about the physical resilience? Again, I'm referring to this because it seemed prescient. Mm. Yes, I mean, I think physical mm. resilience is important. I think that... But there was a specific aspect of physical resilience. Well, I think that, I think that physical resilience is important. Yes, well, I mean, but the specific aspect was he talked about putting up more barriers in the light of the, the Nice attacks. He mentioned that in October 2016. Yes, it's, it, we're now putting up barriers on uh, bridges, and you th you'd think we might have done that before, particularly after what happens on Westminster Bridge. But, but now in the past few days, we've been putting up barriers on bridges. So would you recommend putting up barriers around more public spaces? For instance, you know, there are, there are many, many spaces, even just in London, where people gather. Do you think around uh, parks, around Covent Garden, around places like that? Well, certainly in Westminster, which is where I work, there's, well, been, a lot, there there's, yeah, there's been a lot more barriers and bollards to, to, to protect us from terrorism. And I think we need to consider that. Um, for other places in central London. Is it true, just after our exchange there on the Harris report, is it true that uh, Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald's team have been trying to keep you off the airwaves? No. That's why I'm here this evening. Well, you said that you book your own appearances, that you don't run them through the leader's office. No, 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 no. We work very closely with the press office. But they I... regard you, that uh, the two Js regard you as a bit of a liability after your brain fade on police cross I... Th I'm, I'm here... I've just come from doing another media interview. I'm going on to do another media interview. There's no, there's no truth in the idea that I'm, I'm not in the media, particularly talking about what happened but you're not, at London you, you, Bridge. You, 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 you think you're an asset, clearly, not, not a liability to the front bench. I think I'm Shadow Home Secretary, and it'd be very strange if the Shadow Home Secretary wasn't doing interviews like this. Uh, and you think that in three, four days' time you will be the Home Secretary? I think... The most important thing is that in three or four days' time, we actually win the general election, and then Jeremy will choose his, his cabinet. OK, hope to talk to you on Friday. Shadow Home Secretary, thank you very much indeed, Diane Abbott there. Well, uh, let's get more on that route. Actually, I do just want to pause because we're going on to it now, and I forgot to ask you this, about, about the, the route between uh, Donald Trump and Sadiq Khan. Do you think that uh, the state visit offer should be cancelled for Donald Trump? There, there are many people who didn't think the state visit offer wasn't appropriate. But it's been and, issued by the Queen. It's very difficult to revoke. Well, it, it will be a matter for the palace, um, what happens by that offer. But I think most Londoners are disgusted by the offensive way that Donald Trump has chosen to talk about our mayor, who's offered such great leadership at mm. this time. OK, Diana, thank you very much indeed.